Hi church family, Mara Dolan here with today's Advent devotional. In June of 2010, when my daughter Ava Claire was three, she had an outpatient surgery to remove a dermoid cyst that was between her eyes and just above her nose. The surgery went well and she was able to resume normal activity within just a few days. Five months later, at the beginning of November, the area where the cyst was removed began to swell and then became infected. We went to see a doctor, which um, the doctor ordered a CAT scan. The results of the CAT scan determined the original doctor had not completely removed the cyst. She then referred us to an ENT in Dallas. The ENT in Dallas reviewed the CAT scan and explained to us that the cyst would need to be removed by a neurosurgeon since the cyst was actually inside her skull. After several more doctor's appointments and another CAT scan, a pediatric medical team decided that Ava Claire would need to have a craniotomy in order to successfully remove the cyst. A craniotomy is uh, a surgical removal of part of the bone from the skull. She had two surgeons, a pediatric neurosurgeon and a pediatric plastic surgeon. The pediatric neurosurgeon would perform the craniotomy and the pediatric plastic surgeon would perform any necessary procedures in order to protect Ava Claire's facial structure. Both doctors explained to me and Jean what to expect both during and after surgery. The surgery would take approximately five hours. Ava Claire would be in ICU two to three days and during that time her eyes would most likely be so swollen that she would not be able to see until she was moved out of ICU. Her surgery was scheduled for July 26, 2011, over eight months after the first time her cyst became infected. The past eight months, I had been in a liminal space while awaiting answers to what was causing the infection and her upcoming surgery and then her recovery. I knew she would experience pain and there was nothing that I or her father could do to prevent it. The last eight months, I had been living in fear. Why was I so afraid? She had an amazing medical team, plus a loving church family who was praying for her daily. I should have peace that Ava Claire would have a successful surgery. I didn't want to go back to the beginning of this journey, but I didn't quite know how to move forward. Before they wheeled AC into surgery, they told us uh, we would hear an update in about two hours. We said a prayer for our precious four-year-old, gave her a kiss, then headed to our family waiting room. About an hour later, after her surgery started, a nurse came into our waiting room. She asked me and Jean to follow her because the doctor needed to speak to us. I remember thinking something must be terribly wrong. Why do they need to see us after just an hour? The nurse escorted us into another room and told us the doctor would be in to speak to us soon. Fear immediately washed over me. I found myself again entering another space where I was not certain or in control. I looked at Jean and said, why did he leave the surgery? Like, what if something is, is wrong? What if something went wrong? Just before I could ask another question, Dr. Kane, the plastic surgeon, walked in with the biggest smile I've ever seen on a person. He said, we're all done. I looked at Jean and we both simultaneously said, what do you mean you're all done? Dr. Kane said, 
I wanted to look at the cyst with a probe before we started. I followed the cyst all the way to the end. Well, I discovered the cyst ended right in front of the bone. At first, I was confused. And my second reaction was one of utter astonishment about what I was hearing. The reason I came to this conclusion is because the doctor added, I know what you're probably thinking, and the answer is yes. We all saw that cyst was inside her skull. However, it's not there anymore. We were able to remove it without having to perform a craniotomy. No one has to think very hard to come up with a list of difficulties or fears. There are stories of difficulties all around us. Trouble in our world, fear in our country, trouble in our, all our lives. In fact, Jesus said it would be. He said, in this world you will have trouble. But then he added, but I have overcome the world. Even before Jesus was born, the angels used the expression, fear not. In Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, says, That night there were shepherds laying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of other angels, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to, the, to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Isn't that why we celebrate Christmas each year? To refocus on the one who offers hope in this fallen world and fills us with the lasting peace. In times of transition, Jesus gives hope for the sick, the hurting, the scared, the worried, and the lost. Christmas reminds us to rejoice in the truth that no matter what we face on earth, Jesus has overcome the world. Gazing on Christ helps us to see if we have Jesus, we have everything we need. In John 16, 33, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I wish you and your family and friends a very Merry Christmas.